What is up, guys? Welcome back. It's been a while and I haven't seen you guys. I want to apologize for the uh, long hiatus, but we are officially back. Uh, and we're going to be st kicking things off with a little draft analysis here, as I like to often uh, reignite my channel with. Uh, we are back for the uh, GBA versus NPA League War. This time around, if you don't guys don't know, that's going on. We're having a little league war with uh, the NPA as sort of a send-off to Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. However, uh, the meta for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is not over yet, I would say. Uh, I don't know if LGPE is going to last that long. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But from what I can tell, it doesn't look uh, too fun as a competitive metagame, from what I've heard. Uh, but anyway, let's move into this uh, this draft analysis. Uh, we're going to talk about how the drafting process worked a little bit. Standard Snake, you guys know how that works. Um, however, this time it was 18 people because we're 9v9, so we got jumped all into a pool of, of 18 players drafting on the same draft board, uh, and that might seem like it's a lot and there's going to be a limited amount of mons to select from. However, it's only an 8 mon draft, so that kind of eases it a little bit. Uh, makes it a little uh, bit easier, in fact, than, than 16. Uh, what also helps is the fact that we are uh, nine players from the same league and we're all planning together on what we're getting, so we're not sniping each other. As a result, you'd think there'd be less snipes. You're wrong, because <laughs> I was sniped about, um, I think, nine times uh, throughout the draft, and it got really annoying at some point. Um, it just kept happening and happening and happening in ones that I really really wanted and like I was thinking about getting a round later and they end up going that round and I'm like okay well got to rework the draft plan now uh, a lot of a lot of work went into this draft plan for only a, uh, a two match series because we're each only having two matches against each other so uh, it's, qu it's quite intense you guys are probably wondering how that how it's gonna work if it ends up being tied well one of us is only having one match so that's that's kind of the tiebreaker right there uh, you guys will find out who that is, but anyway, uh, we're gonna move right into this draft analysis So right away I was seventh pick and uh, I felt that there was still something on the board that usually in eight mon tournaments like the TTM tournaments uh, Is banned <laughs> and it was still right there seventh pick and I'm looking at it and I'm like Why is this here? Uh, Alright, I guess I'll pick it up. So uh, I decided to get uh, if you guys remember my days in NPL minors uh, my season three team had this mod on it, and uh, it's Kirim Black. You guys can see it on screen. Kirim is, uh, is a hell of a breaker, uh, base 95 speed, and with eight mons only on a team, it, it makes it extremely difficult to check this thing. Uh, very, very tough. Uh, it's, it's coverage, plus its stabs are very hard to switch into. Uh, on top of that being a Z-mon, uh, <laughs> Z-freeze shock is nearly impossible to switch into. You need like a quad resist uh, with recovery to be able to, to take it on. Uh, and then just it's again it's coverage uh, things like uh, well it stabs in outrage and and dragon claw uh, ice beam on the special side we already talked about Z free shock and then it's got earth power fusion bolt uh, good great special attack for hidden powers at 120 and its attack stat is just monstrous so uh, anything that you can utilize with that like shadow claw for example uh, is, is pretty pretty deadly so Kieran black uh, an insane breaker for this kind of format and at level 50 it hits even harder obviously we are playing on Wi-Fi so Kieran Black was the first mod I picked up, and then I'm like, okay, well, I have to build around this thing, right? And I'm not going to make the same mistakes that I made in NPL Miners. I'm going to make it a little bit different. Um, one of the mons that I was looking at was Embor, uh, and another mon that I was looking at were, was Volcanion. And Volcanion went really, really early. I didn't decide to get it round two. I was going to go for it round three, but it went in round two, uh, I'm pretty sure. And I didn't end up getting it, so I was like, alright, well, uh, let's continue this draft with a fairy. Let's go uh, Fairy Dragon Steel right off the bat. And uh, I decided to get Jolt's favorite fairy in Clefable. Uh, and Clefable is something that I've used that you guys haven't seen me use, but it had a really, really good record when I used it. I went, uh, I believe... It was 11, 12, 13, 13 and 0, or no, 12 and 0 in a league before losing in finals, uh, a league called the CPL, where a lot of applicants for the uh, the NPL uh, are now uh, situated. Uh, they're they're having a huge tournament, a tryout tournament like I was in, and uh, Clefable is something that I really really liked because uh, it's very very tough to deal with. The fact that its two abilities are monstrous, there's no way to wear it down outside of direct damage when it's got Magic Guard, and you can't set up on it if it's unaware. Uh, and the fact that it itself is an incredible setup sweeper with Calm Mind or Cosmic Power makes it very tough to deal with. On top of that, it's got one of the best typings in the game, just pure fairy. 
is very, very hard to deal with. Uh, you need poison or steel and hard hitting poison or steel to deal with this thing. And it's got to be on the physical side because if it can call mine past your your special attacks with poison and, and steel, it's, you're, you're just done for. So uh, Clefable Amon that I really, really enjoyed using uh, when, I, when I did use it. And I can see now why Jolt loved it. Uh, obviously, it's still one of the best mons in, uh, in both draft league format as well as uh as the ou metagame it's it's very hard to deal with uh it's it's one of the premier fairies right now it, it, it sort of rose back up so uh clefable's something nice uh that i'm glad to have on my team and uh next up we went with an aster j classic everybody knows with steel type that i love drafting the most and that is cobalion uh cobalion's cool because it gives me uh momentum into uh kirim which most things that deal with cobalion can switch on in on it very very well uh, for example, certain flying types don't deal with Kirim at all, and having Volt switch into uh, into Kirim is super nice. Uh, if ever there's a ground type that's going to switch in on me, I can always double into Kirim, things like that. So uh, having that Volt switch is really nice. Also, a Stealth Rocker to complement uh, Clefable. I'm not going to want to run Clefable uh, Stealth Rocks necessarily, depending on the matchups that I get, right? So... Uh, so having that uh, that fast stealth rocker as well is really nice. I decided not to Z Cobalion. We went with one Zemon, and I decided to make it Kirim because I feel like Kirim benefits the most from having that really powerful Z move. Cobalion obviously really nice with Rock Polish Swords Dance, but uh, I decided to forfeit that for uh, for the option of keeping Cobalion sort of in a defensive role uh, and always having the option of banding it or or you know specsing it. I guess uh, I can it can run special moves as well. So. Uh, so that's what the, the, the route that I decided to go with Cobalion, and I feel like it fits the team so far. Um, so, like I said, Volcanion was snatched up from me. I was looking at Rotom Mo as another form of momentum and then another U-Turner. Uh, the U-Turner I ultimately ended up going with, the first of two, is uh, another Aster J special from the NPL. We have Diggersby coming back. I love drafting this thing. Uh, I'm, we're in a League War tournament as well with the NPL. Um... Well, I'm, I'm representing the NPL. I was knocked out round one. However, I drafted a team that the rest of our, our players can use. And so far, that draft has gone undefeated. I wasn't the one using it in round one. I was using somebody else's draft. And that's why I got knocked out, sort of. There's some hacks involved and stuff, too. But uh, my team has Diggers Beyond it. It's a really sick team. And I absolutely love drafting this thing. I think I, I, I mentioned this in the last video that I uploaded video and not that update video. Um, that I think I'm going to draft Diggers B pretty much everywhere I go because it's it's really, really good. And it's, it's almost always worth the value. Um, it's a crazy good mon. Uh, really amazing breaker to pair with Kiram. They, they knock down each other's checks so well, like uh, against return, what are you switching in a rock type? Cool, I'm gonna weaken your rock type for for my Kiram. A ghost type maybe? Okay, cool, I'll just U-turn out into my Kiram and then what, what's your ghost type gonna do uh, to, to Kiram or to Clefable even? Uh, Diggersby, I feel, just just really gives me nice momentum into uh, into Kiram and gives me that extra breaking power to pair with it to, to just destroy any team that I want, so. That's, uh, that's the route that I went with that. Next up, we've got uh, another U-Turner on the team. Uh, I decided to go with this. It was a suggestion from uh, from Jolt. And uh, it's, a, it's a mon that Johnny really likes drafting. Uh, if you guys know that I'm a big fan of Mr. Rise Pool, who's one of my good friends. And uh, I'm going to, uh, to try to use this thing as best as I can. We'll see. We'll see how good I am with it. Uh, obviously not as good in Gen 7 as it was in Gen 6. But uh, we got T-Flame. We got Smogon Burp. Uh, on our team. It's a very nice speed tier for the team. It's got good U-turn again into Kirim because uh, Again, what's gonna want to come in on Talonflame mostly gonna be rock types and then I can either go Diggersby, Kirim or um, Or into uh, Cobalion on any one of them and uh, T-Flame is gonna be really nice for that It's only it's also good for stall breaking in case I run into any any stall teams because uh, you know There's there's probably uh, gonna be one of them uh, drafted. We'll, we'll we'll see we'll see who gets it. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, yeah, um, you guys are not gonna be happy with me. Uh, but anyway, uh, Talon Flame, uh, just a really nice speed tier, a, good, a really good revenging mon because that powerful Brave Bird, uh, Gale Wings of Rocks aren't up. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna have to get some some hazard removal somewhere around uh, along the way, or maybe some form of hazard control. Who knows? Uh, but uh, but yeah, Tal Talon Flame. I feel is very nice, a uh, good combo into Kirim, just any fire type in general because they can switch in on fairy type moves really well, and unlike Embor, it's not neutral, it's actually resisted. 
Uh, also switch into steel moves really well. So uh, two of Kiram's pretty big weaknesses, fighting moves as well, and uh, also gives me a ground immunity, which obviously I'm looking a little bit weak to right now. So uh, EQ spam is, is pretty strong against me. Uh, Edgequake is going to be a little bit of a problem until we get to the end of the draft, as you guys are going to see. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, anyway, like I said, I had to focus on getting some form of hazard removal on the next uh, on the next pick. Uh, I was thinking about Ronan Mo still, and then it gets sniped. Of course. <laughs> so we don't end up with Rotom. I, I really wanted an electric type on the team, a grass type that could that could just switch in on on ground hits. Obviously, it's got levitate, uh, so I, I felt like Rotom was uh, was a pretty good option for that. And uh, unfortunately, we we didn't end up getting it. Obviously, we're still using the same tiering system as the GBA, so there's certain uh, tiers that you have to respect. It's not a free draft. So uh, instead, I ended up going with a water type because I. Very rarely draft bulky waters, and I feel this one is one that really complements my style, and that's going to be Blastoise. So Blastoise is nice, uh, as it's got the ability to keep itself from getting worn down through the use of Refresh, uh, through the use of Rest. Uh, it's a good sp uh, Scald Spammer, it's got Spin, it's got Dark Pulse to deal with, um, with ghosts that want to Spin block it. And it's just, it's hard to deal with if you don't have a super effective hit off on it. It's, it's not an easily broken mod because its defenses are actually really solid uh, and the fact that it can cripple uh, physical attackers as well is really nice uh, as my team is, is looking a little bit more physically weak than it is specially in general like especially with fighting uh, rock and ground uh, across so I thought that having something really bulky uh, physically bulky like Blastoise where you can really only break it with like Thunderbolts, Leaf Storms, Giga Drains, things like that uh, is, a, is a very nice for me. Obviously, uh, Thunderbolts and Giga Drains, I'm going to be able to switch into very nicely with uh, with Kiram as well. So I felt like a pure water is was a really good complement to Kiram. The last time I used Kiram, I had Vaporeon with it. The problem with Vaporeon is that its physical defense is not as good as Blastoise's, and it really heavily relies on that wish support to get uh, to get itself back up. In this situation, I'm using Clefable as the wish support to to pass into uh, to to Blastoise to keep my bulk going. So. Um, Blastoise was, was sort of a compliment to the last two mons that I was going to get. At this point, my draft plan was solidified, and it was Jolt's suggestion. Put the blame on Jolt, guys. If you want, guys want to flame anybody, uh, go to at the token minorities and just rag on him. Uh, <laughs> because uh, I ended up getting Mega Sableye in the seventh round, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this team's looking a little bit stally. Obviously, there's a lot of offense involved, and it's not, like, too, too stally, but you got sort of a, a difficult mon to break in Talonflame through its use of Roost and uh, just its typing in general. If you're not firing off rock hits, you're not doing too much damage. As a fire type, it can be burned um, through, uh, through Scald, so it can typically stall out certain waters uh, through Toxic uh, Roost. Uh, Clefable, obviously a mon that's typically found on general stall teams. Cobalion doesn't have any kind of recovery on its own. Uh, Kirim can be run bulky, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to, and Blastoise is usually run bulky, but uh, Cobalion is, is not something you're going to see too bulky, and neither is Diggersby, right? They're, they're more so offensive presence. So the team doesn't look too stally. Uh, but Mega Sableye's role is, is quite important because it's an, it's an easy lead for me that gives me the ability to switch in or prep it in a sense that it, it can switch in almost every time on every rocker possible, right? Because most stealth rockers can't deal with Mega Sableye except for Clefable and Mega Deancey. Those specifically because they're fairies, right? And I have Clefable, so the only one that I have to deal with is Mega Deancey. If I happen to not be matched up against Mega Deancey, which you guys will see once we actually start doing the battles, then I'm in the clear. Pretty much Sableye is good to go to block any kind of rocks, so I don't necessarily need my Blastoise as much or Talonflame's Defog or to, to run like an Ayapapa Berry or whatever berry on, on Kurum, right, or a Citrus Berry to, to keep its health up or Roost. Um, the fact that the presence of Mega Sableye alone is going to help tremendously with, uh, with not needing necessarily hazard removal. I still want it there. I still wanted Blastoise there. Specifically for if I ran into Mega Deancey, right? Because Blastoise is a really good switch into Mega Deancey. Run it specially defensive or even Assault Vest with like Surf plus Rapid Spin and you're you're dealing with rocks regardless. So uh, I thought that that was... I thought I thought that Mega Sableye was really good synergetically and I really appreciated Jolt's suggestion. So don't necessarily go and flame him uh, because it was, it was a big help to me. Uh, he helped out a lot. Everybody's drafts, really. He, he gave a lot of really good suggestions while we were going through draft plans. Um, 
some people that didn't really need help were like Lars and Mono and they decided to draft to their styles. Uh, that's typically what they do. Uh, but uh, for other people like Tom and myself that, that needed a little bit of help, I'm not too, too used to 8-mon and especially not with Kieran Black because it's always been banned in any 8-mon tournament that I've that I've entered. So, uh, so it was nice to have some support like Jolt uh, to help me out because Jolt's really, really solid obviously as a player. Uh, and I think that uh, that channel deserves a lot more subs. Uh, the Token Minorities are doing a really good job. So... Um, finally, uh, I felt like I really needed a good ground resist that wasn't named Talonflame because arrows looked like they were going to destroy me. Um, and there were two Zygarde's uh, around and I don't believe we drafted either of them on the GBA side. So I was like, okay, well I'm going to make sure to get a good grass type and I only have a tier 5 left. So uh, as, a, as far as a grass type goes, what I wanted out of this, this final round was something that sort of baits knockoff. Uh, as well as just has the overall general bulk to be able to take hits almost infinitely. And that's really what you want out of a grass type. Certain things like Delmize and Decidueye can't take knockoff. Yes, they lure it, but like if they ever get caught with it, they can't take it. I want something that can take the knockoff if I decide to stay in and can lure knockoff as well at the same time. So I decided to go with Tangela as the last one. So a lot of people are going to be happy, happy about this one because Tangela doesn't get enough, um, enough shine. Um, in in draft format, uh, it's it's seen sometimes. It gets it gets some picks uh, in some leagues, but um, typically you won't see Tangela too often. But it's a really good value pick as a tier five because it maintains the 100 special attack that comes from like Tangrowth. Tangrowth has the same special attack, I believe, if not a little bit higher. Um, so it still has that, and because of an Eviolite, it actually ends up being a little bit bulkier than Tangrowth on both sides. Uh, obviously it's disadvantage is that it's got an Eviolite, so it can't run any other item, right? So it, it, it doesn't have leftovers, it doesn't have Assault Vest, it can't, it can't do those things. Eviolite is sort of like Assault Vest anyway, but it's got lower spit F, so it's whatever. Um, but what it does have going for it is that awesome 100 special attack. What that means is it's a pseudo tank growth, right? So I can still run Giga Drain, I can still run uh, Hidden Power Ice without the need of an Assault Vest. What that means is that I can also run Tang Growth's typical support moves like Sleep Powder, for example. So there's a lot of really good options that Tang Growth typically would have, but because you see Assault Vest on it so, so often, you don't get to see those options. Physically Defensive Tang Growth obviously uh, does run Sleep Powder from time to time, and there are a bunch of other moves that Tang Growth can really take advantage of, and we're, we're hopefully going to see that with Tangela if I end up bringing it. Who knows? Uh, I hope to bring all eight mods across both games, if I'm perfectly honest with you guys, just to showcase, just show them off as much as possible. So uh, that's pretty much it. That's going to be the draft, guys. You guys are going to see the uh, the games go up soon enough. I know Alar's already uploaded his first game, which I was kind of surprised about because I didn't know if we had agreed on an upload date yet or not. Um, but w w like we knew that the, the announcement was going out, that the uh, the draft analysis were, were free to go, but I didn't know we were okay to upload our game. So I haven't played yet personally. Uh, I play uh, Sock tomorrow night, and I'm not sure exactly when I play Kelly. We haven't scheduled yet, but hopefully by the end of the week, it's already done. So hopefully I'll have the uh, the uploads, the uh, the battles up for you guys by the end of this week, honestly, if I can. And uh, I don't know, we'll see. It depends on uh, on when everybody's free and when I'm going to be able to get the, uh, the videos out. But it'll definitely be out before, like, November, uh, November 25th, for example, right? So, uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this draft analysis. Uh, there's not too much to talk about. It's really going to come down to, to seeing everything in play. And I'm sure you've all watched enough draft analyses to, uh, to know how everything works. Uh, and I've drafted a lot of these mons before, basically, like Kieran Black, Cobalion, and Diggersby I've had before. Um, I've had a variant of Blastoise and Mega Blastoise before. And uh, everything else I have not, actually. All right, so... Uh, well, you guys didn't see me draft Clef Clefable, I never really talked about it, and you didn't see me use it, but I, I know how it works. So, pretty much, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, still, uh, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 5 mons. It's just Talonflame, Mega Sableye, and Tangela. Sort of like the, the stall core of the team that you haven't seen me use, so, 
Uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to wrap it up there. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thank you for your continued support, even though I've been gone for so long. And uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, for sticking with me and uh, for watching this video and definitely watching the uh, the battles come out later in this week or beginning of next week. So uh, also go and check out all the other uh, channels for the GBA and the NPA in the description down below because those are going to be very important for you guys uh, to keep up with what's going on uh, with the rest of the games to see who's winning and who's losing uh, at what point. So remember, it's a, it's a best of 15, I believe. Uh, yeah, best of 15. So we need to win eight matches. I uh, won't tell you guys where we're at yet. Uh, go and watch Lars's video for sure because that's definitely the first one that's already been uploaded. And uh, go and try to watch any of the other draft analysis if you can. We've all got really stupid good teams, honestly, I would say. Everybody's got really, really solid teams. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe and peace.